Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian. All right, here we go. Uh, Etheria Chill, the last track on King's, uh, King's Chill Volume 2. I almost said King's Quest Volume 2. Uh, King's Chill Volume 2. Uh, our um, lovely chill out tribute slash <laughs> middle finger to the King's Quest series. I don't know. Um, some, some people see it as a loving tribute. Some people see it as us taking the piss out of it. And it is both. It is honestly both. Um, but anyway. So, uh, uh, Etheria Chill is from uh, King's Quest VII, a game that I did not particularly care for. Uh, and I say that, you know, uh, with the utmost respect for the designer Lorelai Shannon and uh, also the person looking over her shoulder, Roberta Williams, and all the uh, talented people who worked on the game. And by that, I don't mean anyone from Animation Magic. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, King's Quest 7 is, is such a train wreck of a game, and it's a hot mess, and I've, I've laid all this out in the video that I did on, on the game, so there's no point in reiterating that, but um, the music bears uh, uh, some explanation, because at, at the time King's Quest 7 was being worked on, um, the musical directors at Sierra, and that would be Dan Kaler and Neil Grandstaff, were... Um, trying to shake things up. They were trying to work off of a library of music that, you know, they just compose something and just chuck it in the library, uh, sight on scene. Basically, they just work on something, chuck it in the library, and eventually, you know, when a project came around and, and they go, okay, we need a bit of music for this thing, they would have some sort of, I don't know, system where they go, okay, this is a nice, chill piece of music, we'll shove that in there and see if that works or not. So, they weren't composing music specifically for games. They were just composing music in general and just shoving it into a big pile. And that's how you get uh, stuff like the uh, Polysorb 860 music showing up in King's Quest 7. And you get, um, I mean, uh, the story is that the information superhighway music in Space Quest 6 was um, something that was originally composed for King's Quest 7 or with King's Quest 7 in mind, but it was chucked into the pile and then it ended up in Space Quest 6 instead. So, it's all kind of a hodgepodge, and and I think, in retrospect, well, I mean, no slight to uh, Mr. Grandstaff or Mr. Keeler, who are both very nice and very uh, have, have been very nice to me. Uh, in fact, um, I've, uh, it's in hindsight, it was a weird idea. I mean, I see where they're coming from because you know we have so many projects in the works, and we can't possibly sit down and treat every single thing like a movie score so we might as well pool our resources and uh, you know just uh, uh you know like like you do with uh, today's uh, youtube music library and and the stuff like uh what is that uh, uh pandemic <laughs> music or this very ill-advised sounding music repository where you can just download um free to use music um but in hindsight it kind of gives the games this sort of homogenous and slightly off-kilter uh, vibe to them because you've got stuff like uh, the Ethereum music, which we're listening to right now, and I'll, I'll explain the remix in a bit, but you've got this, and then you got the um, uh, Falderall theme, which is just like circus music, and then you've got the desert theme, which is um, I, I, I don't know, Jean-Michel Char falling asleep on his keyboard. I, I don't know. Um, so, uh, King's Quest 7 is a hot mess in a lot of ways, and also, I feel, on the soundtrack side. But, the the reason I picked this theme, which has now gone all quiet, by the way, because uh, we're about to get into the um, <laughs> what I affectionately call the prodigy segment. Uh, I'll, I'll explain it, but you, you'll, you'll hear. Um, the uh, reason I picked this one is because the, th the, the main melody was just instantly recognizable, instantly... <sighs> what is the term? Hookable? Like, it's, it had this sort of... Like, you'd listen to it and you'd start humming it afterwards. Like, it had... There was a hook to it. And now, I'm ruining it because in the uh, in the original MIDI file, which, again, I, I, I exported the original MIDI file from the game and used that uh, to build my remix around. So, um, the... Uh, the main theme and uh, most of the uh, you know underlying chords and such uh, are as they were played by I can't actually remember if it was Neil Grandstaff who did this or Dan Keller but I'm, I'm gonna assume it was uh, Neil because he did an awful lot of music for Sierra at the time um, but anyway wh whoever it was uh, uh, the 
not that bit. <laughs> the, the the belt that bit is something I I played because it needed the sort of belly arpeggio thing. Uh, but anyway, uh, so so most of the melody bits anyway, and most of the underlying chord bits are, are straight from the original MIDI, and I just uh, sort of picked um, appropriate VSTs or I guess inappropriate really uh, to to, uh, to to play them with, and you know put some nice beats underneath. Uh, for once, I actually programmed the beats myself. I didn't rely on loops, uh, which I admittedly and, and shamefully have done for um, quite a lot of the remixes I've done. Uh, um, uh, Witch's Groove from uh, King's Chill 1 is based primarily around just a single like four bar loop from uh, looperman.com that just sounded awesome in my head, so I just kept it. Um, uh, these days, I'm more inclined to program my own beats, and I'm very happy to say that I did so on this uh, tune. And I'm especially proud of how the um, this this the prodigy section came out, especially in terms of the uh, uh, the beat, because I had a very clear idea in my head about how I wanted this bit to sound. I didn't want it to sound like totally raw and abrasive like, you know, a lot of later Prodigy music was, but I wanted to sound sort of like mid-experience to music for a Jilted Generation. So it's got a bit of grit, but it's still danceable and it still has that sort of lo-fi, breakbeat-y kind of vibe to it. And then with a fucking bell on top of it for some reason. I don't know, I just like bells. Yeah, who, who, who doesn't like bells? Uh, so anyway, now we're now we're just gearing down again, and we're going we're gonna go back into that sweet vibe. And uh, this gives me a chance to talk about you know just the project in general because this is a nine minute long remix, <laughs> and I kind of feel bad uh, for doing like such a long remix and putting it on the album because you know you only have realistically 20 minutes of music per side on a vinyl record, and we wanted to put these out on on vinyl records because one they're pretty and two it's it's just awesome and having a nine minute remix on a vinyl record takes up a lot of space and that you know inevitably squeezes out someone else's contribution which is is awful of me uh which is why we've actually had one of my remixes on the back burner since the first volume it hasn't come out in in its uh um remastered form or whatever uh it's the uh, uh basement music from king's quest 5 you know when king graham gets captured and sits uh waiting for a rat to come and chew his fingers off um i've got a seven and a half minutes remix of that track uh sort of in the style of witch's groove actually uh kind of hard-hitting and abrasive and not very chill at all but uh really cool i think and um it's uh it's it's sitting around it's probably going to come out on king's uh, chill three uh volume three I, I should say uh anyway this gives me a chance to talk about the uh, project itself because as uh eric has already mentioned in his commentary on nectar of the gods uh this is really very much a a community effort like I should not and will not uh, take any credit for the I don't know success or or just the appreciation that these uh, uh, these chill remix albums have received because I am literally doing as as you know as little as possible on this I did two remixes on this album and I sort of co did a third one, you know, the Willow thing that Epic Potato did, but honestly, I didn't do much on that. He just insisted that I get co-credit because I piddled around in his project file for a bit. Um, so, uh, realistically, I only did two remixes for this, and uh, and um, other people have gone in and mastered my stuff to actually make it sound good, so I didn't do any of that. I did the final you know, track sequencing, and I and I uh, put together the artwork, but the photography of the artwork was uh, done by Epic Potato Fiend. Uh, so really, I I did I did very little on these, and and people still tag me and say thank you, Space Quest Historian, for these things. And I I I I'm flattered, but I really cannot take credit for these albums and and, and these I, I guess they're compilations really but anyway these these um uh remix albums because they are very very much a, a community effort and um i actually thought 
for the longest time that the track you just heard, uh, Ethereum Chill, had gone through John Paul Sapsworth's mixing desk because it actually sounded pretty decent. And uh, it sounded, you know, when, when you when you put the whole thing together, you put all of the tracks into a single project and you look at the waveforms and you, and you, you know, see if one track is softer than the other or, or perhaps too loud or whatever. And you sort of mix them together. And the uh, 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 this Ethereum Chill uh, bit actually looked like it, it belonged. So I was just under the assumption that it had gone through uh, John Paul Sapsworth's mixing desk because he's usually uh, the person who I, I send stuff to. John um, is is a great collaborator. He seems to he seems to get me in a sort of way, in a, a sort of mystic, shirtless. I promised I'd talk about his shirt or his bare abs. Um, in a in a sort of let's take off our shirts and do a sauna kind of thing. Uh, so so um, it's uh, it's wonderful collaborating with John. And John, I thought did this one, um, and it turns out he actually didn't. It, it turns out that apparently it just slapped the uh, correct combination of limiters and isotope presets on this thing, and it just turned out right. Uh, so he had to he had to actually tell me, dude, I I, I didn't touch this one. Uh, you you apparently did this one yourself. And he said, okay, sure, <laughs> forgot about that. Uh, so, but we already have a ton of shit uh, laid down for King's Chill Volume Three. So I really hope I'll see you for that one. And um, uh, once again, I somehow managed to go over time, even though that was a nine plus minute long remix. So yay me. Anyway. Uh, uh, cheers, everyone who contributed to King's Chill Volume 2. Cheers, everyone who uh, pledged on, on Curates to get this thing done. Cheers, big cheers to LGR for uh, featuring King's Chill Volume 1 on his channel. And uh, to um, you for listening this far. If you've listened this far, uh, type Aardvark in the comments. You know, get anyone? Wolfenstein? No one? Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll see you around the Chrono stream. Bye.